Hello, my name is Andrew Cowan. I'm um, an associate professor of medicine at the University of Washington and Fred Hutch. And I'm very happy to share with you um, our presentation from ASH 2021 this year in Atlanta, reporting on updated results <clears throat> from our fully human BCMA CAR T cell in combination with the gamma secretase inhibitor to increase BCMA expression in relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma. So we're reporting findings from completion of accrual to our 18 patient study. Um, as many of you are all aware, BCMA is a common target for CAR T cell therapy for multiple myeloma. And gamma secretase is a cell membrane protein in the plasma cells that cleaves BCMA off the plasma cell surface. We have previously shown that we can use a gamma secretase inhibitor and reduce BCMA cleavage and increase BCMA surface density on plasma cells, which could potentially make BCMA CAR T cells work better. The primary objective of our study was to determine the safety of the combination of the gamma secretase inhibitor with increasing doses of BCMA CAR T cells. Our eligibility criteria are shown here in brief. Patients had to be refractory to proteasome inhibitors and immunomodulatory agents or IMIDs. We did allow patients who'd had CAR T therapy before and also patients who had prior BCMA targeted therapy, as well as patients who've had an allogeneic stem cell transplant and patients with previously treated central nervous system involvement. At Fred Hutch, we have taken an approach to CAR T cells where we, we administer them in a defined composition. So basically, we collect the T cells, we select out the different subsets, which are CD4 and CD8. We then have those subsets with viral transduction separately. And our lentiviral vector, which is shown here, has a fully human BCMA, SCFE, which is the part that binds to BCMA, and has an EGFR linker, uh, a truncated EGFR, sorry, that allows us to track the CAR T after infusion. Here is a brief depiction of the study design. Patients on the study underwent leukapheresis, and then they underwent a run-in with the GSI. And we did that so that we could evaluate the impact of GSI on plasma cell surface BCMA expression and soluble BCMA levels. We then transduced and enriched and expanded CD4 and CD8 T cells and, and formulated the infusion product in a one-to-one -one ratio. As a standard for CAR T therapy, patients received cyclophosphamide and fludarabine. The GSI was given as 25 milligrams three times a week, starting on day zero for a total of nine doses. We held the GSI at the discretion of the clinical team, typically in the setting of cytokine release syndrome or neurologic changes. Most of the patients received all of the pre-planned doses of GSI and a few patients missed between two and five doses. So here are the patient, baseline patient characteristics of patients who were on the study. The median age was 65 up to a maximum of 75 years. Patients were very heavily pretreated with a median of 10 prior regimens. All were refractory to proteasome inhibitors and IMIDs. 67% were refractory to proteasome inhibitor IMID and CD38. One patient had a history of central nervous system involvement. And I think notably, seven or almost 40% of patients had prior BCMA-directed therapy. Four patients had gotten BCMA CAR T cells. One patient treated with a BCMA bispecific antibody. Two patients were treated with a BCMA ADC. Most patients ended up needing bridging therapy between leukophoresis and administration of CAR T cells. So here's a slide that shows the safety and adverse events. Treatment was very well tolerated. The most common non-hematologic adverse events were hypophosphatemia and fatigue. Gastrointestinal events, which were a potential concern for gamma secretase inhibitors from other studies of GSIs for other diseases, included anorexia in six patients, diarrhea in three, and nausea in two. All of these GI events were self-limited and responsive to supportive measures. 
94% of patients had CRS, but most of them had grade one CRS, as you can see here in the bottom right. 12 patients had a neurologic change from baseline that included neurologic changes such as a headache. The median duration of a neurologic change was three days. <clears throat> and in terms of treatment, 61% of patients received tocilizumab and 67% of patients received dexamethasone. The only patient who did not have an increase in BCMA with the GSI also did not have any CRS or ICANS. This patient had been previously treated with a BCMA antibody drug conjugate and had evidence of progressive myeloma by day 28 and unfortunately died after a fall that led to a traumatic brain hemorrhage on day 33. This is a slide that shows, I think, one of the most important findings, which is that gamma secretase inhibitors increase BCMA surface density. So what we see here in the slide is the BCMA antibody binding capacity, which is basically a measurement of how many sites a BCMA antibody can bind to. And so I think it's fairly clear here that, you know, this is pre-GSI and this is post-GSI. Almost every patient who we administered the GSI to saw a rapid increase in BCMA antibody binding capacity, a median of 12 fold up to a maximum of 157 fold. There was one patient, patient 11 here, who did not have an increase in BCMA density on plasma cells. That patient had been previously treated with a BCMA targeted therapy, had a deletion 16P by FISH. That's the part of the genome where the BCMA gene is located. And we're exploring whether this finding is consistent with other published reports of BCMA loss. The median follow-up for patients on this trial is 20 months. We treated five patients at the 50 million dose level, three at 150 million, three at 300 million, and seven at 450 million. And here's a summary of responses amongst patients with more than six months of follow-up. So for all 18 patients, the overall response rate was 89%. The only two patients who didn't respond had been previously treated with a BCMA-targeted therapy. We saw deep responses at all the dose levels, including the first patient treated on trial at dose level one, who's still in a stringent CR after 35 months. Shown here is a Kaplan-Meier curve for progression-free survival. So the median progression-free survival for all patients was 11 months. But then when we looked, we saw a significant difference in PFS amongst patients who had been treated previously with BCMA-targeted therapies. And very interestingly, amongst the 11 patients who had not been treated with a BCMA-targeted therapy, the median PFS was not reached, while amongst those patients who had been treated with a BCMA-targeted therapy, the median PFS was only two months. We saw a similar trend with overall survival. The median overall survival was not reached for patients without BCMA-targeted therapy, whilst for patients with prior BCMA-targeted therapy, the median overall survival was six months. In summary, gamma secretase inhibitors increase BCMA surface density on plasma cells, and the combination of a GSI with a fully human BCMA CAR T cell seems to be both weight safe and well tolerated. We didn't see any off target toxicities. One patient had a DLT. We did see prolonged and durable responses for patients treated at all dose levels. The first patient treated on trial received a dose of only 50 million CAR T cells and is still in remission. We did note some significant differences in outcomes comparing patients who had or had not been treated with BCMA-targeted therapies. And we think that the optimization of GSI dosing and timing with BCMA-targeted therapies, all types of BCMA-targeted therapies, whether that's antibody drug conjugates, by specific antibodies or CAR T cells is warranted in future clinical trials. So <clears throat> with that, uh, I will conclude. I would really like to thank all of our collaborators specifically Dr. Damian Green. He is a translational scientist at Fred Hutch, also a, a, an excellent physician whose work led to the development of this clinical trial. And we would also like to thank the Immunotherapy Research Consortium, Fred Hutch, the Basil Family Immunotherapy Clinic, Fred Hutch University of Washington, the SCCA, and of course, more, most importantly, all multiple myeloma patients and their loved ones. So thank you.